what's up guys welcome to Fang the Accurse raid video guide uh, mainly a healing guide but again general overall view of the guide as well for the fight uh, as always I got my abilities scrolling above so you can pause and check those out as well this fight is really really fun um, it is a three phase fight at 95 66 and 33 percent you will change phases what you want to do is get to dumb it down for your raid team and to make it as simple as you can here's how you need to think of it there's one ability for the tanks to deal with, and then there's two abilities for the DPS to deal with. How do you deal with these abilities? Well, let's look at the first phase first, and we'll go from there. The very first phase, the tanks have a dot that um, they kind of go back and forth taunting off um, to keep their stacks as low as possible during this fight. The other tank, uh, one of your tanks is also going to pick up a shield. This shield is crucial to the fight, and having a tank who can who has um, very good movement speed and raid awareness is key for this fight. I really love what Blizzard has done with tanking so far in these first two fights. Again, they are extremely important in this one. The first abilities that the boss has in phase one, he has two abilities. One is called Lightning Fist. He will randomly turn to an area, smash his fist down, lightning will go towards that person, make sure that you're not getting hit by it, and stay loosely spread around the center of the room. Obviously, I missed your melee. What you're going to want to do for his big ability, and this ability is called Epic Center, is you're going to want to tank the boss on a far corner of the room and stack in the middle of the room. The reason you're going to do this is because you're going to make sure that your tank with the shield is not tanking the boss at this time. He's going to jump out to the middle of the raid, bubble in the middle, everybody gets inside, you take almost zero damage from the Epic Center. GG, right? Well, here's the problem is that shield is on a cooldown that only allows it to be used every other epicenter. So what you have to do is make sure that you have a raid cooldown for the other epicenters. So you're epicent epicentering every odd one. So one, three, five, and if need be, seven. Okay, and then two, four, and six, you have a raid cooldown for each one ready to go and your healers are going crazy. The nice thing about this healers is you do have a chance to regain um, your mana because after the epicenter is out, as long as no one gets hit by lightning fist, you really don't have a whole lot to heal besides the tank. So you can use like your, your cheaper spells, your heal, your nourish, your greater healing wave. Um, anything like that you can use just to pretty much um, slowly get the raid back up. They just need to be at 100% before the next one comes out. And you have plenty of time, so you don't need to burn your mana. Your biggest thing in phase one as a healer is going to be mana conservation. Okay, it is critical to try to go into phase two with at or near 100% mana because you will burn through it in phase two. Phase two is one of the most healing intensive phases of any boss encounter I have seen on a 10 man. And I'm not kidding. Um, it, it rivals most, especially because of the mechanics of the way that phase two works, which we'll go into in a minute. Okay, but for this phase, again, all we're doing is we're making sure that we're spreading and stacking, spreading and stacking, we're dodging our lightning fists, and our tanks are taunting properly so that the shield tank can always make sure that he's got the bubble ready and the other tank isn't just getting walloped with stacks. It does take a minute to figure out, but once you get it down, it's extremely, extremely simple. It's just a nice little dance fight. And again, at 66%, he will turn and head on into the next phase. So as you can see right here, we're stacking up for the last epicenter. The reason we tanked him where he is is because he has to run all the way across the map this way to get to the other weapon. This gives us a couple more seconds of DPS. Always nice to have. Um, so that's why we did it that way. Now in the second phase, which you see here, again, the tanks are dealing with stacks of an ability um, which do hit rather hard. But the other thing that you have to deal with as a raid, your two abilities are wildfire, and then you have to, um, and then draw flame is like the other main one, okay? So what happens is he will cast wildfire on you like he did to me just here. After five seconds, it will drop fire on the floor as you see. Um, what you wanna do is run out to the outermost ring of the room, drop that fire, because as you can see, it moves. It does not stay still. After a cer certain amount of time, he will draw all his flames in and then begin his um, flame strike, which is pretty much he hits. When he hits the tank, he hits everybody in the raid for 80K a tick. Um, because of this, this is what you want to do, is what we did is we popped Hero on our first one and we didn't shield it, okay? Um, we just popped Hero, I popped my Trank, um, and we're popping Rally and Cry. 
on that first one just to try to cycle and we're cycling these cooldowns so that we don't have to use the bubble on the first one. Now, obviously after that it's just rinse and repeat, but the nice thing is, is after that you can use the shield every other one for this. So what you want your tank to do is your shield tank runs immediately right underneath the boss drops down that shield so that the boss is into that shield and what it will do is it will reset his stacks of flame and it will reset the counter so that you don't get hit like a truck. Um, it is essential for your tank to be good at this and to make sure he is right under the boss so that the boss gets his stacks reset or else you will wipe. Um, the reason that we did it this way was because it worked out so that way when we pushed him into phase three, we could shield him when he was doing his ability to get him down to zero stacks. So that means the third phase, you don't have to worry about that flame ability going off either because the what happens in that third phase is because of the spread and stack that has to happen and all the healing that you've done in phase two, you're really, really running short on mana. Um, you're trying to conserve as best as possible. Um, and that's where you run into problems is you need to make sure that that stack is, is reset for that third phase or you are going to hurt. So as soon as he's about to push in, you want to make sure that you have a, um, a shield ready for that, for that segment. So if you have to throttle your DPS or you have to do what we did in Pop Hero to get him in where we wanted him, go ahead and do it. But the main thing in this phase is again, make sure your wildfire is out of the raid and make sure that when draw flames coming in that you're not getting hit by the flames because they will hit you on the way in as well. Um, but as you can see here, now he's going to pick up his last weapon. He's going into phase three, and now it is time to kick his butt. All right, it is the last phase. So what do we do in this last phase? Make sure you've got your, if you've got DBM up, your slash range six, okay? Because as long as you're six yards away, the arcane resonance, which you see bouncing in the back corner, of the raid, you want that guy at least six yards away from everybody else. He does not stick up, stack up for velocity. This is a really cool dance phase, very, very similar to phase one, okay? Your tanks are taunting, um, and what you're doing is like you're running in for arcane velocity, you're popping a raid cooldown, and then what you're doing on the next one is you're running back out when he's got about one or two seconds left on that channel. Now, the reason you're doing that is because the way that arcane resonance works, you don't want arcane resonance going off in the raid, because if it hits more than one person, it will wipe your raid almost instantly. You wanna make sure that that one person is out, that you're putting big heals on them. Um, that's the biggest thing with this fight. And then obviously your tank can shield every other one again. So you're gonna go through your raid cooldowns one more time and get through it. After that, you're popping defensive, you're popping personals, you're making sure you've got your soul stones. I mean, you are popping anything that you can pop to help mitigate damage. Um, after that last arcane velocity, you need to be popping it because if your DPS doesn't have him down in that amount of time, you're out of raid cooldowns, your healers are most likely almost out of mana if they aren't already. Uh, and you really, like at the end here, you can see I'm just literally spamming regrowth just to try to get us because I see we're at 10%. I know the end is near. You see the guy with the arcane resonance do a clutch job of just making sure he's out of the raid. He's not going to get hit. He's not going to hit anyone else. He doesn't care about anything else going on. His job is simply just to not hurt everyone else. Your DPS is just flying around, guys. I can't tell you how important this phase is just to get through. I mean, cycle your cooldowns, guys. Cycle any cooldowns that you have, but make sure that you're paying attention to abilities first. As you saw in that second phase, I ended up having to cancel a Trank a little bit early, and the reason I did it is because I had Wildfire, and my job is to get it out of the raid. It doesn't matter. It's just bad RNG. As you can see at the end here, I have the Arcane Resonance, so what I'm doing, I'm running out of the raid. I'm still trying to keep everything up. Um, it switched, and now I can stack back up for Velocity. You guys really need to understand that you only need to be six yards. As you can see there, I failed a little bit there because I should have been closer. Because after you're out of six yards, you don't need to be any further out. You just stack back up, spread back out, stack back up, spread back out, and you're taking a lot less damage. You can see just how huge the damage is here during this phase, just for that time running in, because as soon as he starts casting that velocity, it hurts. But anyway, guys, that's the fight. That's how you beat Fang. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Hope you beat down some bosses. See you in the game.